Hello everybody, this is the part 5 of the tutorial about the HLOD system. In this video, I'm going to explain about how to add pack scene in HLOD. Up to this point, we have created some static items like meshes, collisions, lights, and etc. HLOD system can handle these very good with minimal usage of data. I can say at least 10 times less than memory usage of the scene tree. Also in HLOD system, we have a layering system which help us to create cities with that. Now what if beside adding some static item in HLOD, I want to have some flexibility? Or what if I want to create a rigid body in my house? Even you want to create a system to spawn some NPC in different region of your city. I can say if your game is really special and you need some specific things, you should design all of this stuff by yourself. But here we have already made for you some helper function inside HLOD system which may help you. This is my scene and in that I have a single HLOD node. If I open its Baker scene node, you can see there is no sub HLOD into this. Okay, let's add a pack scene. Just click on plus button and add a new pack scene. Then a new tab with our pack scene will be open. If I filter my asset to show only the pack scene, you can also find this pack scene location by right clicking and click on show file system. The name of the pack scene in asset table is the same as the one for the root of the pack scene node. So here if I change the name of the root name, its name also will be changed in the asset panel. So now let's add a script. As you can see, the root node type is MHLOD node 3D. This is mandatory for the pack scene. All pack scenes should have this node type as the root. Okay, let's add something here. For now, I add a single rigid body with a mesh and collision. Now let's add this to our scene. In the baker scene, I just double click on the pack scene which I made and I rebake the scene. Okay, as you can see, my pack scene appear also in the main scene. And as you can see, if I run my game, it's work as a rigid body ball. Now there is an important thing that you should pay attention to. This pack scene will be get removed as we get far from that or when the join mesh kick in. Because this system is designed for a huge world so this pack scene should at some point get removed. So keep this in mind when you are creating your pack scene. For example, if you make an enemy spawner with this system and maybe one of the enemy detect the player and start to follow the player in this case, it could suddenly disappear when the spawner is destroyed. In that case, I suggest to create the enemy with the pack scene. And in case the player interacted with that enemy, you can handle that with another global system, which never remove. So there is a cutoff LOD value in the Baker scene, which you can change based on your need. Basically, at this LOD, the pack scene will be removed. By the way, if the join mesh kick in in LOD less than this, this pack scene also will be removed with that. Now here, if the value remain on minus one, we will use the default LOD cutoff value for the pack scene. You can find this default value in the Baker inspector. Another thing about the pack scene is that each time it gets destroyed and reappear again, it's go back to its initial state. For example, here you can see the position of the ball go back to its original position. Now, in this case, we have just a single ball, but we can have much more pack scene in our open world game. Obviously, we cannot save the state of everything because after a while, the RAM memory becomes full and the game will be crash. But we can save at least some of them. Or in another word, the most recent stuff. Also, for the different type of the pack scene, we need to save different things. In this example, we need to store the position of the ball. But for example, for an enemy spawner, we should store other things like which enemy are alive or dead. And if they are dead, what is the position of them and etc. I will show you how you can save the state of the object in later in this video. Now in this pack scene there is some helper function to do this, but you should save the state of them manually. First let's see what helper function MHLOD node 3D provide for us. Here we have some virtual function which you can override, like before remove which is called before the pack scene is going to be removed, update LOD will be called on LOD change, also you can use ready function to run when the pack scene is added to the scene tree. So let's add a print function for all of these and see how they work. You can see first the ready function get called, then when LOD change of the LOD function get called, and finally before remove function get called. One thing you should pay attention here is that 
tail OD level of the ball is calculated based on the center point of the HLOD scene, not the center point of the ball. Now there is another function which is called get global ID. This function basically gives you the unique ID of the ball in the entire world. You can use this to save the state of the ball. For example here if I print this ID at creation and I duplicate this house, you can see the printed ID for each ball is different. One important thing about this ID is that this ID is same in each session. I mean if you change the structure of the city and rerun the game, this ID will be different. So this is not good for saving the game. It's only for the runtime stuff. Now you can use this ID by yourself or you can use the helper function which you provide. Here we provide some functions which all start by state which help you to save the state of the things. To show you an example, let us save the position of the ball. For that, first I change the ball physics so the player can push them. I just disable the first layer and activate the second layer. Okay, now player can move the ball. Now in the ball scene script, I add the ball node here. Also in before remove is where I want to save my state. First here I create the state information which I want to save. In this dictionary for now I put only transform but you can add more stuff. For example, this ball can even be broken. So any other state can be here. Next, I use a state data set to save my state. Now behind the scene, this will use global ID to save this state, but you should not be worried about that. Next, in the ready function, first you need to check if we have the state data. If we have, then get that by state data get and we set what we should set. In this case, we should set the ball transform. Now here there is a small issue with this because we set global transform in the ready function. Just called deferred this and everything should work properly. Okay, you can see as the ball disappear and then it reappear, it is exactly at the same position. Now one important thing is that we cannot save an infinite amount of the state data. At some point in the game, we should remove some packs in state data so we could free some memory in RAM. So how should we do that? Basically, you should do nothing. This system is automatic. This is a class which I wrote in C++ which is responsible for that. It is called LRU cache or in another word, least recently used. What it does, it keeps the state data which is more recently used and it removes the one which is not recently used. Basically, each time in your script you call a state data get or a state data set, you put this state data on top of the list to not be removed. And other state data will go further down in the list to be removed. What I wrote also is efficient, which means it does not copy data around, it just moves the indices. So how many of this state data you want to keep is depend on your game. You can change this in the project setting. So I open the project settings and down here in HLOD setting, you can see we have a state cache size. By default, it is 50. You can change it if you want. This depends on how much data you save with each state data. And if the packsin data is removed, this if statement return false and the code under the if statement will not run. Okay, now let's see how we can interact with the HLOD item itself. I mean, for example, in this case, how can I interact with walls, doors, or lights, or any other stuff which is baked into HLOD system? Interacting with this is a bit more challenging compared to how Godot handles things. But this is the trade-off for removing the nodes and packing everything into HLOD data, which use much less RAM memory. Also, this was really challenging for me because all of these items added in another separated thread and interacting with these need a lot of attention so they will not create any problem. First, let me show you how we can interact with a simple light. I create a light, then I create a packed scene and I call it light control. One thing about the pack scene is that you cannot have your custom export variable. The reason for that is that we pack each item in HLOD onto the smallest data possible. So we cannot handle custom export variable. But we can send some information with three argument variable. Here we have three argument variables. For example, in this case, I want the light to turn on or turn off within a specific period of the time. I send the time period with the first arc in millisecond which in this case is 1500 milliseconds. Here also I make a comment so I know what is the first arc. 
Okay, now we need to bind one of these items to our packsim. I change the name of the light to the red light and then I right click on that and I activate access as a unique name. Now in my packsim node, I set the binded item 0 name to the red light. Also, I give a hint to the binded item to what type it should expect, which is light in this case. Now let's go back to the light control script. Here first I calculate the duration in second. After that in the process function I create a system to be notified after the duration time like this. Basically the process will accumulate time until it reaches the specified time duration. After that the code inside the if statement will be executed once and the time sum will reset to zero again. This means the if statement will trigger once every duration interval. Now here I set the disable of the binded item 0 to the value of is light on and then I flip the value of is light on. Okay, let's test this. You can see the light is turning on and off. With disabling the bind item function, you can enable or disable any other type of the item like meshes or collisions, but it won't work on packsing items. Okay, now let's see how we can move some items. First, I create a new pack scene and I call it move item. I create a 3D node and I move that with the animation. This time I add this pack scene to this well HLOD Baker scene. Now here we should bind two items. One of them is mesh and one of them is collision. So I just put the name of the well and for the first one, I set the item hint to be mesh and for the second one, I set the item hint to be collision type. Okay, and in the process, I just use bind item set transform to change the bind item movement. Okay, as you can see, the bound item is moving with its collision. One other thing about the binding item is that as a packsing get destroyed, every bound item goes back to its original state. But you can save their state if you want. Okay, that was it about this video. Also, thanks to everyone who support us. And make sure to like this video if you like it. And till the next video, bye.